final notice to Lara Croft, a current tenant of premises. This is to serve as your final notice for the purposes of terminating your ownership of Croft Manor. You are required to immediately vacate and surrender possession of said manor to Atlas de Mornay, executor of estates. Lara, it is unfortunate that you have forced my hand in this matter, but so be it. As you know, your parents appointed me executor of the estate in the event of their absence. Since your mother disappeared, her death was never technically declared. And given the circumstances surrounding your father's death, it's no surprise that he never drafted a formal last will and testament to account for this circumstance. Unfortunately, you have no legal claims to the estate. I'm willing to negotiate a modest monthly stipend from your trust, but only if you leave the manor by week's end. Don't fight me on this, love. Your mother wouldn't want that. Sincerely, Atlas. There has to be a will or some kind of evidence of what happened to Mum in the manor somewhere. Dad's safe. Hmm. Needs a combination. It's got to be in Dad's papers somewhere. Maybe in the library. artifacts from the Nile Valley. I always love looking at these. The Grand Hall. Always loved playing in here as a kid. This will be one of the first things to fix. What are you doing sitting there on the floor, Mistress Lara? Looking at the compass, thinking. What about, if I may inquire? Got to remember to pack this for my next trip. Should be able to explore the dark now. Hey Jonah, sorry for not getting back to you sooner. I've decided to do some research at the manor. A lot has happened and I need some time to think about what I want to do next. This old place is filled with memories and secrets. Uncle Atlas has tried to keep me out of here for so long I don't even know if I want to keep it. But after everything that's happened, Maybe I can find out what it still means to me, if it's worth fighting him for. I'll let you know how things worked out when I'm back in London. Just thinking about discovering faraway places, about finding adventure. <laughs> I'm sure you will, my lady. The offer came in the post last week, and I still haven't told Richard. He flew ahead to Tibet, where I will meet him shortly. I never told him I was submitting my work. Never thought there was a chance of being accepted. Oh, but a gallery tour is not something I can pass up. The show will take me away from England for over a year. I'll begin in New York and travel across the United States and... Oh, God! I'm giddy even writing these words. When Richard and I were married, I was prepared to relegate my painting to a hobby. But it was Richard who objected, who gave me my atelier and studio. Without that support, I might still be painting boring landscapes. Now I can't shake the foolish sensation that leaving would be a betrayal. He will laugh at that and insist I accept even though I know it will break his heart to be a part. He never once asked me to sacrifice any part of my life for his. I have, of course, in a thousand small ways over the years, but he would never ask. The discussion can wait, and I will join him in Tibet. I won't cast a shadow over his find. I will be by his side in his triumph, as I know he will stand by my side in time. The soul of an explorer. 
but don't grow up too fast. Another one of Dad's immortality artifacts. I think Roth bought this for him from a trader in Greece. brush up on my ancestors one of these days. Lara, you know the West Wing is off limits! I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to see... We've been through this. Was... Mum's room in here. Just stay out of the dark. Locked. Need a key to open this. Dad was always so protective of the West Wing. Figurine. I bet this appealed to Dad's idea of immortality, of rising from the ashes and being born anew. the library. Locked. Hmm. There's got to be another way through. My birthday crown. <laughs> I was so proud of that thing. <laughs> That's my handwriting. My penmanship was pretty good. Well, this is a hell of a thing. I met someone tonight quite unexpectedly. But it shouldn't have been, it seems. I've been so buried in my work, so distracted by my latest revelations, I never bothered to notice my surroundings. But there she was, sitting at my table in the library. Her name is Amelia. And apparently she's been studying right next to me. Art history, of all things. I shared some of my research against my better judgment, but I wanted to see how she would respond. And she did not disappoint. I felt as if I was suddenly engaged in a mental game of chess, moving and counter-moving in argument. At one point, that poor old librarian had to shush us as if we were children. I feel so foolish for not having noticed her earlier. She's a brilliant woman who's challenged my ideas for the first time in memory. In truth, I don't know if she's feeling as exhilarated as I am right now, but I dare say our conversation was mutually stimulating. For the first time in a long time, I find myself thinking about something else besides my research. I hope she returns for another round tomorrow. My parents made a good team, challenging each other from the start. Dad would have liked me to go to Oxford, but I insisted on UCL. <laughs> yep, looks real. Roth once offered to forge me a fake diploma to show Dad. Ugh. 
A picture with Dad and Anna. Never liked wearing dresses, but the color was nice. This is probably my grandfather, Benjamin. One of Dad's Yoruba masks, a gift from a friend he met on an expedition in Nigeria. I finally introduced Richard to the family. It went precisely how I imagined. I see but polite grace from Mother, indifference and disinterest from Father and thinly veiled contempt from Atlas. Of course they don't approve. To them, Lord Croft is the man who took away their beloved daughter and ruined her long-standing engagement, though I was never going to marry that repugnant Earl of Farringdon anyway. One might think they would be happy that I was being courted by a genuine Lord of the Realm. It just happens to be Richard Croft. In their eyes, the man who single-handedly ruined a once great family... But there's nothing to be done now. Watching how Richard dealt with their subtle insults and disrespect. Such grace and calm. I know he did it for me. <laughs> I think I'm falling in love with this man. It will break my mother's heart, but I cannot live the life she imagined for me. My time with Richard has only made this clearer. It must have been hard for Mum to go against her family's wishes. I'm glad she did. Dad's map of the forgotten cities of northern Syria. He was closer than he knew to finding the Prophet's tomb. Dad's book about immortality myths might be useful in my research. This is the map I made for my first expedition with Dad. It shows a path to the library through the servants' passages. Amelia, the news has reached Mother. She knows that you broke off your engagement with the Earl of Farringdon. She is beside herself with worry. But, for the moment, she's controlling the narrative. As far as anyone knows, you're just having innocent second thoughts. But the moment your affair with Lord Croft goes public, it will be too late. Our name will be as ruined as this man you've chosen to bed. Don't you see that you're being selfish, Amelia? Please, consider your family. You're a Demorne. Everything you do has a greater effect on us all. I'm coming down to London soon. Don't do anything rash until we have a chance to talk. <sighs> Falling apart. Maybe I should just let my uncle have this place. They say a good test of a relationship is how well you travel together. Well, I'd say Amelia and I have passed that test with flying colors. Indeed, these last few months in Egypt have been nothing short of extraordinary. She and Roth get on like old uni chums. In fact, the two have spent more than a few nights drinking and playing cards into the wee hours. Despite her decidedly proper upbringing, Amelia's taken to roughing it more than I ever have. She fits in and connects with the local populace with such amazing empathy. Because of her, 
I've had a bit of an unexpected breakthrough in my research. She managed to convince an artifact dealer in Old Town to sell me a magnificent and quite unusual Tibetan scroll. From what I can tell, it seems to contain details surrounding an immortality ritual of some sort. I think it's time for me to take the next step with Amelia. In fact, I don't think I can wait any longer. I will ask for her hand tomorrow in the bright Egyptian sun amidst the dust and ruins. I'm not surprised he asked her to marry him as soon as he got the idea. Amelia, I know we have had our differences in recent years. I've tried my best to keep an open mind about your relationship with Richard, but I just can't let you go on this ill-conceived expedition without saying my piece. You say Richard's theories have merit. You say that he may have actually stumbled upon some mythic, unknown truth, but I have seen nothing to support such claims. And while your word may have been enough in times past, I cannot let you squander away what remains of your name and reputation and that of our family, truth be told, on some damned foolish crusade. I intend to go to Richard's investors and let them know exactly how he's spending their money, but I want to give you a chance to put a stop to this yourself. Please, don't go to Tibet. If not for me, at least for Lara. just as creepy as I remember. My lord, I hope this missive finds you on a successful expedition and in good health. Before I bore you with estate affairs, I wanted to let you know that our little angel has been into some mischief. As always, I indulged her in our usual game of chess. Over the course of the game, she broached the subject of her mother. She's having trouble remembering her now, and wanted to enter her ladyship's atelier, which you sealed off, to play on her mother's piano. It enraged her when she wasn't allowed to go in, of course. For someone so young, she has such strong emotions. Later in the day, she set a trap for me in the walk-in freezer of all places. Before I knew what was happening, I found myself locked inside. Mrs. Sheffield discovered me an hour later, shivering and somewhat peeved. It took us an additional hour to find Lara in the grounds. I know all her hiding places, of course, but this time she really did not want to be found. Call it years of observation, but I can tell when she's out of sorts. My lord, if I may be so bold, she misses you fiercely. She is lonely for her father. Please consider a call as soon as you are able. Poor Winston. I remember being so angry. He was always so patient with me. I'm at a crossroads now. Good lord, that's such a cliché. But there's truth in it. Two roads before me. Both present joy and compromise. A life with Richard. Adventure, intellectual pursuit, perhaps a new family. But also a man obsessed with something I cannot understand. Or a life of obligation. Upholding the de Mornay name, embracing our traditions, not losing the family that raised me. Oh, this really is a rubbish choice. I don't want to lose them, but I love the life I've started to build with Richard. He comes with his own difficulties, but I can accept them. Will it be enough?
Everything is almost ready for Mistress Lara's birthday expedition surprise. It's been a bit of an all-hands-on-deck effort organizing the affair and keeping it secret. She's obsessed with Egypt, memorizing hieroglyphs and ancient Egyptian districts, so she'll be delighted with what Lord Croft has come up with. This will be good for her. She's been acting up of late, but I know she's just craving more of her father's attention. He's been so buried in his research. It'll be a nice moment for the two of them to reconnect. And I do believe he needs it as much as she does. King to Queen One. I'm going to win this time, Winston. <laughs> Clever girl. But you should know by now, winning isn't everything. Queen to King's Bishop Six. Check. Easy you to say. You always win. Night time. I would play chess with our old butler, Winston, on this board. Never could beat him. I always chose white. Maybe if I let him go first once in a while, I might have won. It's Queen. What I mean to say is try to enjoy the journey, Lara. Don't rush to victory. Bishop to King Seven. I know, Winston. I just want... Oh, no! I didn't even see that! I loved a good bottle of wine. Hmm, I can still smell his favorite Bordeaux. Dad, this is it! The basement of despair! Indeed, Lara. Muster your courage, for this is the only path to the Library of Infinite Knowledge. Look there! See the string? An ancient Egyptian tripwire. The Keepers of Knowledge want none to disturb their treasures. We must tread carefully. Let me lead. I know how to spot all the traps. I'm sure you do, my darling. Lead on! One of the wire traps Winston made for my birthday expedition. <laughs> Winston used my hair ribbons to make this. He and Dad put a lot of work into this birthday surprise. Hmm, water damage from the main hall above. to the manor. Dad used to say his granny hated all the bright lights. Hmm, there's a missing page. Amelia left tonight. She packed her suitcase and walked right out of here and I didn't even notice. 
Like those days in the Oxford Library before we even met, I just had my nose in a book lost in my own world. I am such a fool. I have let my obsession with this damned ritual of long life rule my better judgment for far too long, and it may already be too late. How could I have not seen this coming? I've made this mistake over and over, always putting my research before my personal life. But it's never hurt like this before. I simply cannot live without her. If I have to give up this accursed quest that has plagued me for so long, then so be it. I am going after her, right now, tonight. Okay, Kaz Ledger has to be in here somewhere. Hopefully it has the combination to the safe. I've created a clever little map for Lara's birthday expedition. I used the invisible ink Amelia picked up for me in Morocco so many years ago. At the time, I remember being so annoyed by that rather aggressive street vendor, but she just smiled in her sunny way and paid him without a second thought. I assumed it was just a tourist scam, but it actually works. Turns out it requires a very specific kind of vellum and a heat source to illuminate the ink after it's dried. It should prove a nice challenge for Lara to puzzle out. I always accepted that Richard's rather unorthodox research was just something I had to live with. But... but this time, the thrill of discovery has taken hold of me. I never imagined I could be drawn in this way. Richard cabled to tell me he's found the monastery. The symbol we deciphered in the scroll was the key to its location. I don't know if I honestly believe that this will lead to the fabled elixir of life, but I can't help but feel that a great secret awaits us there. My brother was threatening to shut down the expedition, but I managed to talk him down for the time being. Now I am going to meet Richard. I would bring Lara if I could, but she's still too young. She'll be in good hands with Winston, and when we return, her parents might just be a bit more famous. This music is familiar. It's beautiful. <laughs> it appears Sir Reginald's helmet fell off. Oh, didn't I put it back properly? Took quite a tumble off of this old thing when I was a girl. Still feel it in the shoulder from time to time. For God's sake, memorize the combination, you fool. Lara's expedition treasure. My favorite painting by Amelia. The day of our wedding anniversary. Okay, got to find those objects to figure out the combination to the safe. There's something else here. I've reached the monastery. As Roth predicted, it was hidden deep in the Himalayas. And now that I'm standing on these high stone walls, I am overwhelmed by the sheer beauty of the mountains that surround me. It is simply breathtaking. But what adds to their spiritual majesty is the truth of this place. The monks welcomed me, as is their way, but they seemed to expect me. They must have known someone like me would eventually come seeking answers. I know this is the place. They've conducted the ritual before. I have seen the evidence, the distinctive symbols carved into the floors, the art displayed on the inner chamber's walls. They've created the elixir before, and they will again if I can convince them. I sent Amelia a message straight away. I want her by my side for this discovery. Hmm. Dad was looking for an elixir. Was it the elixir of life? Uh, 
This is my handiwork. I used to love drawing pictures of tigers. Spent so many hours in here, reading, dreaming of my own adventures. Dad's lighter. I don't remember him ever using it, though. The Croft family crest and initials BC. I wonder if this belonged to my grandfather. Okay, should be able to light the fireplace now. One of Winston's notes. He always hid sweets for me to find. I remember this now. Each district in ancient Egypt had a symbol and a number. I always preferred these symbols to the actual number hieroglyphs. Now, let me see, let me see. These two myths are referencing the same source material. This was always one of my favorite books in this library. I used to trace hieroglyphs. But where did I see this image? Dad, I think it's this one, in the chapter on Egyptian districts. Why, yes, I think you're right, Lara. I remember the page with the illustration of Ra. My goodness, you've been paying attention, haven't you? This could be an important breakthrough. This picture was taken in the library. 1820 additions to the main hall in progress. Hmm. Does this mean I'm your research assistant? That and more, my darling girl. Takes me back. Those were good times. The best times. of a key. I remember this map now. It leads to the master key, but we made it with a special kind of invisible ink. It could only be seen with the heat of a fire. Hmm. I think I stashed one of Winston's master keys in here when I was a kid. can see the map. Looks like the key is hidden under a trunk near the bookcase. X marks the spot, as they say. The master key. This should get me into the west wing. All right, this should open most rooms in the manor, including the Forbidden West Wing. Hmm, I think there might be more clues to find in the library.
the pharaoh's crown from my birthday treasure hunt. How old was I again? Six? Eight? Hmm, I think this hieroglyph corresponds to a number, but which one? Okay, Dad's clues mention Mum's paintings and their anniversary. Hopefully I can find some answers in the West Wing. With Amelia gone, the manor is a different place. A dimness pervades, a quiet I can't stand. Even though Lara is too young to understand what has happened, she also senses the change. She's asked after her mother only once, and I'm afraid my reaction must have terrified her. I will need Winston more than ever these next few months to help look after her. I never quite realized how much grief can consume a man, but I am utterly consumed. I know I can't escape the pain, but I will try my damnedest to avoid it. I will seal the West Wing for as long as I live in this place. It will remain exactly as Amelia left it. Perhaps someday Lara can find her own answers there. I believe it took this trip to push me over the edge. I've been able to see Richard in his element, seeing him at his best and his worst. I've experienced the purity and chaos of his passion, and I came to realize I want his passion in my life every day. <laughs> so it's done. Richard wanted to wait another four days until my birthday, but I wouldn't have it. Once I make a decision, I prefer to get on with it, so we found a small chapel in Luxor that was just right. And with Roth and the others at our side, we married as the sun set over this remarkable land. Mother will never forgive me. Atlas will forever resent me. But I don't care anymore. I'm free of de Mornay obligations. Free to pursue my own passions and live my life surrounded by those who will encourage and challenge me. I'm excited for the future, whatever it may bring. Tomorrow, Richard and I return home to London as the Crofts, forging our path together. My mother's perfume, the smell, so familiar, I can almost remember. Mum, on her wedding day, she looks so beautiful. There's a date, October something, damn, the number is faded. The anniversary was in October, but which day? I can't believe I don't know this. There's got to be another clue somewhere. I remember this. Dad gave it to Mum on her birthday. October 13th, Mum's birthday. Hmm, pretty sure my parents were married in October. I think it was close to her birthday. Hmm. 
This is Dad. I suppose it's a family tradition, but I can't imagine having one of these made of me. After everything Atlas has done... I think this was Dad's pocket watch. Hmm, looks like it stopped precisely at midnight. How could you tell him about the expedition? It's just all been too much. I needed to talk to someone. He's still my brother. Amelia would not have approved. That alone should have been the end of it. But I am, as God made me, a stubborn fool. I locked all the West Wing's doors, and I shall not open them again until either my life or my obstinacy comes to an end. The night before, Roth told me I would someday change my mind. Like a broken arm cast in plaster, he said. The wound would heal, and we would someday shed the bandages to be whole again. The metaphor made me furious. The clumsy way he cast our loss off as nothing more than an inconvenience. There is wisdom in his rough words, but I've done what I must. Perhaps one day, Lara will throw back the doors to let the sun shine in again. Maybe she will find her own sense of peace in this place. At least that old thing still works. Mum's wedding ring. I always wondered what happened to it. The inscription is faded. I am bursting with pride. Amelia is with child. It is amazing how everything in life can change with such a simple event. Obviously, we don't know the gender, but already we've discussed possible names. Perhaps Benjamin, after my grandfather, or maybe Griffin. He was more infamous a Croft than even me. No, Amelia wouldn't have it. Besides, she's certain it's a girl. She favours a, a classic such as Scarlet or Kate, though I've made some headway with Lara. A subtle nod to the sun god Ra, and our days in Egypt where certainly this child was conceived. I find myself thinking about this new life we've created, of how much she might be like us. For all my research into myths of immortality, I may have ignored the most obvious answer to the questions that plague me. We live on through our progeny, our genes, DNA, experiences, passed through the generations. Perhaps this is the simple truth of eternal life, and I've just been too stubborn to accept it. Dad may have discovered the secret to immortality without even knowing it. My lord, we all hope your work was well received at the conference and look forward to your return. As is so often the case with these missives, I wanted to call your attention to an incident involving our little angel. It seems that Lara has been the subject of some ridicule amongst the other girls at school. From what I can gather, some of the other young ladies were teasing her for being too much of a tomboy. You know how Lara can get when pushed into a corner. Let's just say they won't be bothering her again. But I do think their words have had an effect. I believe Lara has been missing her mother lately. She's begun to worry that she isn't like the other girls. And having grown up with only a father, it shouldn't come as a surprise that she has trouble relating to them. I wonder if this new friend of yours, Anna, is it? Perhaps she might prove a welcome influence. It might be worth bringing her to the manor to meet Lara. In any case, I'll let you decide the proper time to do that. 
please travel home safely. Yours, Winston. Mum's atelier. Dad sealed it soon after she died. He probably couldn't bear the idea of removing any of her belongings. Untouched for years, exactly as she left it. I stood up to my family's criticism, stood in defense of Richard and our love. But as my new life began in Croft Manor, doubt set in. How could love flourish in these cavernous halls and endless passageways? Had I made a terrible mistake? I have never been more delighted to be wrong. Richard welcomed me to the manor, my new home, with a game. It was a clue, written in jumbled words from five different languages, but it pointed the way forward. The next clue was a seemingly blank piece of parchment in the kitchen, where the heat of a candle revealed a message written in lemon juice. I followed each step grinning like a child as I solved his riddles and chased the trail to its end. A white cloth stretched out on the lawn where a picnic was laid out. <laughs> we laughed and ate, and my doubt vanished with the last of the morning mist. Love can and will endure. I don't have any memory of this. I wish I could remember doing this. Mum died too young. Mum with me as a baby. I've never seen this. Hard to believe I was ever that small. Mum's paintings. Which one was Dad's favorite? I returned home this afternoon to collect the last of my paintings. I suppose I should say I returned to my family's home. Atlas was there, in one of his foul moods. And even as he dripped venom for Richard with his cruel barbs, I could only laugh. To think that I once listened to my bitter brother in matters of my own happiness. My dismissal only served to infuriate him more. I left him there in father's study, muttering to himself. On the drive back, as Winston took a longer route through the country, I looked through my paintings. Richard's favourite one among them. A simple abstract with blocks of red. I smiled, thinking about giving it to him. I was happy. And... I was going home. Hmm, blocks of red. Dad's favorite painting. Maybe something about that painting will help me figure out the combination. Okay, back to the study to open that safe. You've almost got it, darling. Here, let me show you. Like this, see? <laughs> well done, Laura. Well done. I wonder how my life would have been different had she lived. <sighs> this was for a show in London of Mum's work. What I wouldn't give to see this today. Hmm, it says here, Amelia Croft plans to show her work in New York. I wonder what happened with that. Lara arrived tonight, though not without a bit of drama, but all is well. She's a healthy, beautiful baby. I've never seen Richard so happy. I'm sure he'll be celebrating with his favorite whiskey tonight. It's calm and peaceful now. Just the gentle sound of the rain and the small, sleeping breaths of this new life I hold in my arms. Lara, Lara Croft, my 
darling daughter. It's hard to put into words this feeling I have. We share a connection, something I never expected. A love so powerful and pure. Someday you'll feel it too. No matter where you go or where you find your place in this world, we will always have this connection. I'm glad I still have so much of Mum's work. Dad, what do you keep in there? Nothing too important, Lara. Estate business and such. If it's not important, then why bother putting it in a safe? I should know better than to try and pull one over on you. <laughs> there is something important in here. And it's for you, should you need it someday. Well, let's hope you came through for me, Dad. Not it. No, that didn't work. The answer has to be in the clues. For God's sake, memorize the com. I believe it took this trip to push me over the edge. I've been able to see Richard in his element, seeing him at his best. to hold back the overwhelming grief. Amelia's plane crashed in the mountains. She died alone in the snow waiting for me to find her. Oh God, not her, not now. I cannot accept it. Life without her is too painful to imagine. I know what must be done. And I am resolved. I'm going to bring her back. Perhaps this is why I am here. Perhaps this is fate. A test of my faith in the truth I've sought for so long. Roth will fight me on this, but I can't face Lara. I can't look into her eyes unless I try. I must try to bring Amelia back. The monks are preparing the elixir now, and then we will see if all my years of hunting this truth was for naught. Dad, what did you do? Dad's sequel to his first book on immortality. He never got a chance to publish it. Handwritten. This is the only copy. Damn, this isn't it either. I was certain there had to be a will in here. Wait, what's that? Hmm, a blank page. Dad must have left this for me. It has to be important. Hi, Dad. I've been thinking about Mum lately. I wish I knew more about her. How did you meet? What was she like? 
Winston told me that she was a brilliant artist. Are some of her paintings locked up in the West Wing? And I guess I just want to know, did she love me, Dad? Did she ever say that she did? Maybe I'm just being silly, but will you tell me more about her the next time I'm home from school? Lara, I've reviewed the report from your therapist. I have to say I was surprised to see a clean bill of health. I somehow doubt you've so easily abandoned your irrational claims. Indeed, where have you been the past few weeks? My secretary discovered that you booked a flight to Turkey on the 20th. You can't have been simply sightseeing, as your customs claims suggest. I know you're up to something, and I'll be damned if I let you use the Croft assets to indulge the same obsession that led to my sister's death. It's not too late to relinquish your claims on the manor voluntarily. If you refuse, I will find a way to cut you off. Sincerely, Atlas. Dad became interested in immortality myths after his expeditions to Egypt. <laughs> well, hello there, Sir Lancelot. Don't worry, you won't be boring your sword this time. Mistress Lara, I took the liberty of preparing a tray, as dinner did not go according to plans. I've included, in addition to your meal, a few treats. I would appreciate it if you kept this between us, but I felt tonight called for something special. If you will forgive me the indulgence, your rapid exit from the dinner table had me concerned, and I wanted to impart something that I hope sets your mind at ease. I have known your father for quite some time. There is an intensity to his passion that can be frightening, but I recognize that same passion in you. You're more like him than you know. Never doubt that he loves you more than his research, more than his artifacts, more than anything in this world. Storms pass, and tomorrow will be clear and blue again. When you have finished, please leave the tray outside. Be well. Yours, Winston. hidden message. What are these strange marks? They have to be some kind of clue.
You should also know by now, I'm not to be trifled with on this board, young lady. Mate. Oh, I am going to win, someday. My stuffed bear. I couldn't have a tomb without a mummy. this just to keep his research safe. The renovations are proceeding in secret. The work crew Roth hired for the job have been paid handsomely to keep the details of the job out of the records, so I'm fairly confident no word will get out about what I'm doing. I've been careless with presenting my findings, attracting all the wrong sorts of attention. Roth thinks I'm being paranoid by building this secret vault, but I know I'm being watched. My work is too important, and potentially too dangerous. It can't fall into the wrong hands. 
I need a secure place to keep it all safe. The missing page from the renovation plans. They didn't want anyone outside the family knowing about this crypt. My love. It is silent. So peacefully silent now. Even after the madness and chaos of the crash, I can't help but still wonder at the beauty of these mountains. I understand the magic that drew you here. Please know that I feel no pain in this moment. Only immense sadness. Sadness that I couldn't see your smiling face once more. That I'll never meet the wonderful woman that our daughter will become. There is so much to say, but I'm tired. The sun is setting. The cold of night will overwhelm me. I know I will fall asleep soon, and likely never again awaken in this world. I'm scared. Richard, what lies beyond? You know I've always struggled with faith, so I'm holding on to yours for now. I'm holding on as best I can, my love. Become the father Lara deserves. Know that I will live on in her. Mum faced death alone. She was so brave. Dad's Tibetan scroll. I remember he used to pour over this late into the night. This was part of a set of statues Dad found in China. He thought it was linked to the Temple of Xi'an. Perhaps I should look into it someday. It's over. I have done all that I could, and my Amelia is still cold and dead. Roth first scowled at my designs, then he pleaded with me not to go through with the ritual. Not because he feared it might work, but because he feared what I might do when it failed. And it has failed. There is no doubt in that. I prepared everything according to my research. When I dropped the stone into the elixir and held it to her lips, I thought for the barest moment that it had worked. The hour was midnight and my pocket watch stopped inexplicably. There was a charge in the air like the moment before a lightning strike. For a heartbeat... I imagined that my life was being drawn from me as one empties a glass in order to be poured back into Amelia. I would have welcomed death if the last thing I saw were her eyes clear and alive again. But the moment passed. Amelia is still dead, and I was no Orpheus. We will return. You brought her home. She's here, somewhere. Richard. I tried to see you in person last week, but your manservant hustled me away like some common tout peddling silverware. He told me you are heartbroken and you're not yet ready to see visitors. He told me you blame yourself for your loss. Well, to that, I say, you had damn well better. I hope it hurts. I hope every moment of your life from this day forward is a ringing echo of loss. I hope you live just long enough to feel that pain grow when you hoped it would diminish, because you earned it. You stole Amelia from us. You ruined her reputation and poisoned her mind with a fantasy for children. In the end, you might as well have choked a life from her with your own hands. Do not contact me again, ever. But you must make arrangements for the future of your daughter. Have you considered perhaps it would be better if you followed Amelia sooner rather than later? As Lara's legal guardian, perhaps I could erase some of the damage you've already done to the poor girl. If not, I will do everything in my power to see to it that the Croft name is forgotten. Lara deserves better than you. So did Amelia. And so do we all. Atlas. <laughs> Dad 
Dad's collected knowledge. There must be so many secrets hidden in here. There's an inscription. This is the Croft universe. Our knowledge is to the east. Our respite to the west. Our future is to the south. Our past is to the north. Our past to the north. Could there be something else beneath the manor? Amazing. Even in here, Dad went out of his way to hide his findings. Might be able to use this to access other parts of the manor. Hi, Dad. So I know I only just returned to school, but when can I come out to the dig site again? It's just so boring here. We're doing all the stuff I already read last summer. I always end up staring out the window and thinking about our expeditions, and then I'm yelled at for daydreaming. I promise I'll be good and not disturb you and just work wherever you tell me. I just miss it, Dad. And I miss you. This bust of Anubis was from Dad's Egyptian collection. He must have put it down in the basement for our little expedition. Lord Croft is resolved to seal the west wing of the manor. I try to talk sense into him, but he will not be swayed. And to make matters worse, I believe his experiences in Tibet have only further fueled the fire of his obsession. He's now up at all hours in his study, researching God knows what. And poor Lara, she is so confused. Too young to understand the tragedy that has befallen this great house. My dearest hope is that Lord Croft will emerge from his grief and embrace fatherhood and the love of his daughter. But I fear he may give in to his obsessive nature, that which Lady Amelia tempered in him so well. In any case, I will be a rock for young Lara. She will never sense tragedy and sorrow in me, only the love and support she deserves.
our respite to the west. Our future is to the south. Our past is to the north. Incredible. This crypt was here all along. I expected a sort of crushing finality to grip me when we returned to the manor to lay Amelia to rest. Indeed, once the last of my funereal duties were performed, I fully believed that I would crumple to the ground next to her and expire, not from grief, but succumbing to the terrible exhaustion of the last few weeks. Instead, as the mausoleum stone slid into place, I felt a sort of peace and energy. One that I confess caught me entirely off guard. This was not the terminus of our story, and I was a fool to think so. Her body may be gone, but her spirit still resides here, in the manor, in me, in Lara. Her soul is forever twined with mine, and death is just a momentary interruption. I walked out of that cold quiet into a sunlight that burned my eyes, and I have never been more sure. Death is not the end, and there is work yet to do. My god, can it be? Dad, you did bring her home. My dearest Lara, it is difficult to write this, knowing these may only ever be words on a page you. I wonder if you will remember my voice. Will you remember the way we used to play and laugh? Will you remember me comforting you when you were sad? Know that I'm still with you, Lara. My energy, my love. It's within you. It always will be. Use that energy to pursue your passions in life. Never let others determine your journey. You become who you are through your choices, through the love you give and the promises you keep. I hope you are happy, that you are loved and successful in whatever it is you choose to do. I am proud of you, my darling. Remember me with all my love. Your mother. Hmm, what's this? A letter. Lara, 
I have received the notarized affidavit confirming Amelia's grave and the discovery of the burial crypt within the manor premises. While I can't fathom why your father would hide your mother's fate from her own family, I cannot deny that any legal claims I may have had on the estate are now null and void. Croft Manor and the remainder of your father's assets are now yours in perpetuity to do with as you wish. If there comes a time when you require assistance in managing the estate, I hope you will consider contacting me to retain my services. Sincerely, your uncle. I've been so focused on defying my uncle, of fighting to keep his hands off this manor, that I never realized how much this place actually means to me. But since I've been here, I can feel the presence of my mother and father. I sense the entire history of my family and the deep roots we have in this place. I want to honor my parents. I want to honor all of my ancestors. The Croft family may be all but destroyed, but I will make our name and our home great again. broken sword I brought back from Yamatai. The Atlas, such an amazing piece of craftsmanship. Sophia insisted I take it home with me. I can still remember the last time I fired these. The Croft family crest. Hmm, this belongs to Anna. Most of her belongings are in the guest house. What was she doing in here? <laughs> Someone has a sense of humor. Lara, since your return from your expedition to Yamatai, I've grown increasingly alarmed at your erratic behavior. I can only assume you suffered some kind of psychological trauma and are only acting out as a call for help. I want you to know that I hear you, loud and clear. Anna and I agree that it's time for you to be evaluated by a professional. I took the liberty of arranging an introduction to a highly qualified colleague of mine. You should be receiving the details in the post soon. I want to impress upon you the importance of this, Lara. As executor of the estate, it is my duty to see that it is left in capable hands. And if I may be blunt, you're acting like your father when he was at his worst. He nearly lost the manor himself in those days. I'd hate for you to repeat his mistakes. I encourage you to embrace the help I'm offering. Sincerely, your uncle. My great-grandmother Rose, nicknamed the Golden Rose for her perfect reputation. I wonder what she would have thought of me. 